this probably doesn't look like uh, the intercoastal waterway. We're still in the marina, and what we're doing is putting some floor down, carpet back down. After we heard the uh, sound of the diesel down here with just the uh, the floor, we were going to take it back and put a wood floor in it. We decided to put the carpet back down because it sure deadens the sound. And what we've got, we've got our carpet going in, we've got our bolt hole coming up for our hatch. Now Connie's got our floor in and it looks really good. And now we have our floor open and if you've never uh, been down below on one of those these I'll take you down we'll look at the systems now what we have as I look forward is a fuel tank that's a hundred gallon that's the original tank there and back you've got a water heater and these are spare parts there's a prop in behind there spare prop come on around is some plumbing. What we did was the uh, marine air conditioner that it's got kills a Honda 2000 so we plumbed in a uh, regular home air conditioner. It runs on 900 watts and uh, the, uh, the Honda will handle that. Muffler, 100 gallons of water some extra line. We come on around. You've got two saddle tanks here, which give another 50 gallons. And right here we have the intake for the marine air conditioning unit. It's sitting up there. There you've got your diesel strainer, water intake strainer and uh, there's the just four cylinder diesel engine that's all it runs it these are displacement boats so uh, they're very fuel efficient uh, when I was chartering my boats ran half a mile to the gallon so this is a completely different world at nine miles to the gallon the big box up here houses uh, batteries Take you back down. You can see we've got our food loaded low, low in the hold back here. So if we take a roll, it'll stay there. Now we'll throw a little net over that before we go. Where we've got our gem cutting machines on board, we'll be working as we go. And Connie's cutting out some banners. She's been cutting banners for a group of sailboaters that was out here. Full raft ready to go. So we got a way to get Mudley into shore. And it's our last look at the marina as we head on off. St. John's. Now what I'm going to be doing as we go along, I'm going to be taking sites out of the uh, treasuresites.com site files as we come to them. A lot of them I've never been to myself. I flew over them, flew the entire state, putting that site together and doing the research and that sort of thing but uh, physically in the water I've not been there so as we go past them I'll be calling them out. Connie's heading us up to the uh, 275 bridge now this goes between uh, to the beaches from Orange Park it's the southernmost bridge Jacksonville and up ahead I believe you can see the city right up off the bow Heading out to the mid channel, Connie's heading us up, then we'll go on around the bend. And what you're looking at now, before we get up to the city and big ships and all that, it'll take us a full day to go through there. It's about a 30 mile trip to Mayport, and uh, which is the mouth of the St. John's, the Atlantic, and the uh, intercoastal, all, all meet at a junction there. We're gonna, we're over here coming up the uh, St. John's, and we're gonna turn around and come in here in the Ortega River system 
and uh, while we got plenty of daylight it's 430 and since we haven't anchored the boat that much we want to get plenty of time to get situated and all that sort of thing and our bearings are the Ortega rivers in this little pocket and you can really see the city of Jacksonville showing up so just want to for our first night out take it easy have plenty of time to anchor get situated and get a meal and all that sort of thing anchorage point you can see the bridges at the choke point up here winter's point where we're going to be going in short order under the uh, 90 bridge and the i-10 and all that and i'll give you a tip at uh, when i first started researching the sites on treasuresites.com i came across a uh, an autobiography by a confederate captain jj uh, dickinson and also his uh, uh, history of Jacksonville and he described the Spanish fort as being on this point and at that time which is you know 1900 or so I can't remember they were dismantling it and uh, they were finding quite a lot of Spanish coinage all around this area. November 25th at 2:45, we left Orange Park at 5 o'clock we anchored off of Winters Point uh, just out of the crab pot line in eight feet of water. We've covered 11.1 .1 miles. Here's our view from the water at night. 